12.30. It is 3.55, even though, can you see it? Yeah. 11 p.m. 7.10. It is 9.11. It is 11.12. It has officially been more than 24 hours since we began this journey. Over the next 24 hours, we are gonna be spending our time in nothing but airports and airplanes. Right now, it is 12.30 and we are in Arequipa Airport in Peru. You can see the time there, it's 12.30, and we're waiting for our flight to go to Lima, and then we have a layover to go to another place, but we will tell you more about it when we get there. So first, let's get on this flight to Lima soon, and yeah, have a safe trip. It is 3.55, we've arrived in Lima, we've picked up our bags, we're sitting down. We're going to eat something here in this little food court area that you can actually access before you go through security. Now we have another flight, but it's not until 1 a.m. tonight, so that's what, more than eight hours. So we have to occupy ourselves in this sort of area before security, where check-in is and all these food places are. So thankfully there are lots of uh, different places you can eat at, places you can kind of sit, bounce around at, some sh uh, stores, and yeah, we're going to see what the next 8 to 12 hours is like in this area. Who knows how it's going to go. But for now, we're going to enjoy some pizza. What is supposed to be a medium pizza is more like a small personnel for a 7 year old child. As we sit here and eat this American pizza in Peru, in Lima Airport, the reason why we are here right now in Lima Airport is because we were trying to decide on where to go after Peru. Now, I have been in Peru for about two months. She's been in here for about a month and a half. And we weren't really sure where to go because some countries you can't really go to. You need COVID tests. You need all these other requirements, such as vaccine and health insurance and special forms to fill out and it makes it a real big headache to try to go to. So we were thinking about going to Mexico, but Mexico is quite expensive. Uh, not to be in Mexico, maybe a little bit, but flying to Mexico, the flights were pretty expensive. They were about $400. So pretty much everywhere to go is really expensive right now. And we decided to book a flight to Colombia, which was the most affordable. Let me talk pizza review. It's loaded with barbecue sauce. Really good. We really wanted to find a flight to another country to visit or some other city to visit. Now, we do have a flight going to Colombia, but it's actually a very short trip because we can't really find another place to stay for a good period of time that is budget friendly and affordable at the moment. So we decided maybe we will go back to the United States and do a quick visit and then maybe go somewhere else after. So that's why we have some really weird flight schedules today, and our next flight isn't until after midnight, which, with this flight, we are gonna be flying Copa Airlines, and we will be flying to Panama City, and then Panama City to Bogota, because there was really no straight shots to Bogota that were affordable and uh, very quick. Meanwhile, while we're in Lima Airport for the next nine hours, we're gonna try some food, just hang out, get some work done maybe, watch some videos, try to pass time as quickly as possible, and really see how fun it is to be in Lima Airport for nine hours. And then when we go to Panama, we will be in that airport for about five hours, so it would also be the same sort of situation. So, I hope you enjoy our 
24 hours of being in different airports and on airplanes. For this pizza, which is basically a personal pizza, they say it's a medium. It's not. It was about 21 sole, so a little more than $5. Not so bad, not so expensive. Definitely cheaper here in Lima than it would be in the United States anywhere to have Papa John's. I think, maybe. Don't quote me on that. I haven't had Papa John's in a while. But this is a barbecue chicken pizza. So you have some chicken, some onions, some barbecue sauce, caramelized. Honestly, I was just in this pizza for the barbecue sauce. The rest of it, it's mediocre. It's not so great, but the barbecue sauce, if you're like me, anything with barbecue sauce is super good. Love barbecue sauce. They also give you some garlic sauce with it. Tastes like straight butter. So yeah, we're gonna chill for a bit, get something else to eat in a little bit, and see how it goes. Then several hours later, we hung out at Starbucks for <laughs> more than an hour, got a couple of coffees, and got some work done, watched some videos, and there's still so many hours left until we board our flight. It is 7 o'clock, and we board at 1 a.m., so before we can even check in, we still have maybe three to four hours. So. We gotta kill some time with something, so I think it's time to get some more food. Because I don't know what time this food court closes, and I'm kinda hungry. There are lots of options. We have China Walk, we have Parado's Chicken, McDonald's, KFC. There are many options to choose from. We already had Papa John's, that's why I didn't just show it. I'm kinda feeling some McDonald's, kinda feeling some Chinese food. Mm. Tough decision, I don't know. Well, decided on something. The mighty old McDonald's. I was gonna get KFC, but then I saw a good pricing. Right here I have a chicken barbecue burger, a medium Coca-Cola, zero, no calories, and a medium fry, all for about 13 sole, so somewhere around three, four dollars in that range. The airport is completely dying down now. There's not nearly as many people here as there was when we arrived around 3.30. Food court area is getting much quieter. There's more seating, more open space. The only problem we have in this area is trying to connect to really good Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi seems to be very crappy. It is free, so it doesn't really work that well, but I think you can purchase some Wi-Fi. Also, here's this barbecue chicken burger that I got. Let's give this baby a go, see how it tastes. Pretty crunchy, pretty warm. Definitely fresh. Mm. That barbecue sauce really hits the spot. Just enough in there. Covers the whole chicken when you bite into it. Phenomenal. If you look at it, it is generally one big giant chicken nugget. And it tastes wonderful. Also the fries. Man, McDonald's fries are always so good, no matter where you are. Sometimes they can tend to be a little cold if you get them at the wrong time, but these are nice and hot. Mm. A little bit of ketchup, a little bit of mayo, perfect. I'm gonna be so bored over the next couple hours, I think I'm just gonna have to keep eating and eating as long as these places stay open. The cleaning ladies are cleaning up quite a bit, so I don't know if it closes down at any time, but I'm gonna do something to keep ourselves busy. I know I said something like this similar earlier, but it's actually really cool that you can come here to Lima Airport and access this whole food court area, a few different uh, shops and restaurants without actually going past security and without having to check in your stuff. The check-in area is downstairs, but if you just go in the doors and you go up the escalators, you have this whole area to hang out before you actually check in. So it's really useful if you have a lot of late night flights or you're leaving out of this airport late at night. And maybe that's the reason, but I honestly haven't really seen this in many of the airports I've been to. Most of them, like you walk in the door, there's a check-in area. You have to check in and you can't go any further until you check in. So it's actually a really cool option and I'm glad they have it here because it saved us. 
All right, so let's have a quick tour of the airport here. There are two floors. There's the first floor, and then you have the second floor. And where we are right now is at the entrance. This is the entrance. You have the roads where you get dropped off. And here is the bottom floor. Most of this is going to be where you check in. There's some areas where you come out after baggage control. But this is all the first floor. There's nothing really down here. A few vending machines, if anything. And other than that, you need to get to the second floor to be able to do anything. So when you come in through the doors over here, you have your check-in desk. And then you have this big open lobby with some seats, Dunkin' Donuts, the vending machines. And you actually have to head towards the escalators to go up to where all the restaurants are. So if you're here really early and you can't check in yet, you just come right over to the escalators. Hop on. Go all the way up to the top. First you have a restaurant here called Tanta. You can go eat there. Or you can head even further down this hallway here and you'll go to the food court. So you first come up the escalators right here. You have some electronic store over here called Coolbox. You have a little store where you can buy some gifts. Down this way on the left is going to be Starbucks. Another restaurant called Juicy Lucy. And if you go all the way down the hallway, it just brings you to the other side where the other escalators are that go down on the other side of check-in. So here is the long hallway. It's just a bunch of offices for all the airlines and some financial stuff. There are a few shops on the side when they are open. Like there's one open right over here now. But other than that, there's not much down this hallway. Actually, it wraps around. It does like this big giant square. So when you come about halfway down this little hallway here, you take a right here and this will take you over towards security and there's ATMs. See, as you can see, you have United Airlines there, Information Peru, and then these foggy windows on each side. It's nothing but personnel. You can't really get in there. But the cool thing in this hallway is we just walked past it. You have another information map so you can see what is around. So as you can see, we just came from the first floor. We were down here right by the doors. And now we are on the second floor. This is the long hallway here. And this is pretty much the area that you can access for all the different food options. Because from here and up, it's security controlled. This is your boarding gates. There's more food on the other side, which you can't get to unless you have your boarding pass and you are ready to go through. Here is where security begins. You have to come over here after you check in downstairs. You have a money exchange on one side and an airport fee tax station. We also have another cafe over here with some different food options. And then all the way down this hall is where we started with the McDonald's, Dunkin' Donuts, and all the main choice restaurants. So that's just a quick tour of the little area upstairs and downstairs and what there is before you actually go to your boarding gate. Well, we just made a stop back at Starbucks because we need better Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi in that cafeteria area over there with all the restaurants is terrible. You try to connect and it just kicks you out. It's not really that great, just for maybe some social media, but if you want to watch videos, you need stronger Wi-Fi. And the Wi-Fi here at Starbucks is really reliable. We are here and uh, got like a little mini sandwich. That's what it looks like. Nothing too great, but I'm gonna sit here for a while, eat this. We have maybe about three hours until check-in and we're gonna try to kill some time, see how it goes. Here's the current situation. We've moved over to the corner against the wall. We have some outlets here. We can plug in the devices, charge up, and we're gonna try to sit here until they kick us out. We'll see how long that is. It's currently 8.45, so we have a little more than two hours until we check in. It is now a little bit after 11 p.m. And we're finally at the check-in area about to check-in. There's lots of people here. Ah, uh, not lots, but at least 50 people. So 
we finally passed through security. Now it is uh, half past midnight, it's 12.30. That was about over an hour to get past check-in and security. I went through security and he basically told me that I had to pay a fine for overstaying. When I told the lady I was staying for two months, that was what I planned. And she wrote me down for just 40 days, so she screwed me over and I had to pay a $21 fine for staying over 40 days. And it sucked, but we are through. Now our flight is boarding in about uh, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. And then we are heading to Panama, which will take about three and a half hours, and we'll land in Panama around 4.49 a.m. exactly. Hopefully. So apparently there's some false information online because as somebody from the United States, you're supposed to get up to about six months in Peru, but he told me maximum is three months, so maximum is 90 days, and she only granted me 40. I guess that's something you don't know until you get here and you find out. And also, I asked him, I said, why did she not put a stamp on my passport when I came in? And he also didn't put a stamp in on the way out. And he said, because of COVID, we don't do stamping anymore. Well, when you put a stamp in a passport, it also tells you how many days you have. So that's a good way to, you know, know exactly how long you can stay and how long you have until you need to exit the country. And because of that, it makes it very confusing. It's kind of like a loophole or like a trick, I feel like, for them to make some money. Kind of annoying. We've made it to Panama City, Panama. Now we have about a four to five hour layover. We are totally beat. I fell asleep on the last flight and I was sleeping until we landed and we landed and it scared the crap out of me. I thought we were crashing. A little, little scare right there, but they also served a meal on the plane. Some uh, bread sandwich and a cookie bar. Well, it is now 7:10, and we've killed several hours we've tried to sleep we've gotten kicked out of one gate area and now we're headed to a new gate because our plane keeps getting changed to different gates and I think I'm about ready for some more coffee to kind of get going again and activate my body because I think I have a total of about three hours of sleep and it's impossible to sleep on these hard chairs where you can't lay down so let's go find some coffee. <sighs> That's good. Just got a iced coffee. This was five dollars. Really good though, really strong. Good way to start the morning. But our next flight takes off around 9, maybe 9.30ish. It is 7.30 now. We'll probably board in about 45 minutes. And it is our last leg to Bogota, Colombia.
<sighs> All right. It is 11:12. It is almost noon time on Sunday. It has officially been more than 24 hours since we began this journey coming from Peru to Colombia. We visited four airports, Arequipa, Lima, Panama City, and now Bogota. With a total of three flights, Sky Airlines from Arequipa to Lima, Copa Airlines from Lima to Panama City, and Copa Airlines again from Panama City to Bogota. That was a full 24 hours in multiple different airports and different airlines. So uh, that's gonna be it. So thanks for watching this journey. It was long, it was painful, but we got through it. And on to better days. Like always, thanks for watching. See you next time.